Hey guys, Mr. McKinney here, just doing a Unit 5 review video. Alright, so Unit 5 covered extrema and concavity and optimization, which was basically just word problems. Extrema was basically just dealing with the first derivative, concavity was dealing with the second derivative. So this whole unit is just looking at the first and second derivative and how they relate to each other. If one's positive, what does that mean about the other one and about the original function? So the first thing we talked about was extremes. So when we talk about absolute extremes, first of all, global is just another word for absolute. So absolute maximum is just the highest point on your graph. Absolute minimum is the highest, or sorry, the lowest point on your graph. And both of these, anytime you're talking about an extrema, it must be a finite value. So you can't say that your extreme is positive infinity or negative infinity or 1.9999999999 forever. That's not a finite value. Um, so if we're looking at graphs, if the arrows are pointing up, that would mean we have no absolute max. This one does have an absolute min and the min would be zero. You wanna give the y value. Um, on this one, we would have a max at four both of these are our max. Um, you would just write it once. You would say the absolute max is four, and then the absolute min is zero. Now, if we put endpoints on it, same thing here. We'd have the same max and min as the previous problem. Now, if those endpoints are open, then they cannot be the maxes. So this one would have no extremes. All right, then we started talking about local or relative extremes. So a local maximum is the highest point on an interval. A local minimum is the lowest point on an interval. So if we think about a polynomial curve that goes up and down, each of these points are local maxes. Each of these points are local mins. So when you're at the top of a mountain or the bottom of a valley, that's a local or a relative extreme. Now they could be curved where your f prime is zero, it could also be corners or cusps where your f prime would be undefined. So f prime is either gonna be zero or undefined where you have local extremes. So if we're asked to find all the extrema, first of all, let's look for locals. So we have a local max, we have a local min, we have another local max, we have another local min, and then to find the absolute max and min, since we are a closed interval on both sides, we're gonna have an absolute max and min. Up here, that's gonna be our absolute max. And then our absolute min ends up being at the same place as our local min. This is also our absolute min. So in this case, if I was listing off my answers for local min, I would have two answers, like let's say negative two and negative three. And the absolute min would just be negative three. So a point can be a local and an absolute. You can have more than one local max or min. You can only ever have one absolute max and only ever one absolute min. You might have none, but you can't have more than one. All right, so the first thing that we need to think about when we're looking for the extremes is what is the value of the first derivative? And so the first derivative is either going to be zero or undefined if you're at a local max or a min. And if we think about it, at a max, we're going from positive slope to zero slope to negative slope. At a min, we're going from negative slope to zero slope to positive slope. And again, it could be undefined. So you could have corners or cusps. But the main thing to keep in mind is that if you are at a local max or a min, then you have to switch from positive to negative slope or from negative to positive slope. If you don't, switch from positive to negative or negative to positive, then you're not at a local max or a min. So the only other place that a max or a min could happen would be at the endpoint. So we always wanna be checking the endpoints. We call them critical values if the derivative is zero or undefined. If we actually find the point, it would be a critical point. All right, so if I wanted to find the extrema on this equation, anytime I see extrema, I know I'm dealing with the first derivative. So the first derivative of this function would be 3x squared minus 3. And I want to know where the first derivative is either equal to 0 or undefined. Now, if it's a polynomial function, it's going to be defined everywhere. So I just want to know where it's equal to 0. 
So I'm gonna make sure I set it equal to zero. So three x squared minus three equals zero. Three times x squared minus one equals zero. And then I can factor out my difference of squares. The two solutions are positive and negative one. So these are critical values. These are the only possible places that a local max or min could happen. Because in order for a local max or a local min to happen, we have to be at the top or the bottom. And so the slope would either be zero or undefined. So to figure out if they're maxes or mins, we wanna to check to see if the slope goes from positive to negative or if it goes from negative to positive. And the easiest way to organize that information is with a little table. So I'm gonna put X, F, and F prime. I don't have endpoints on this problem, so I just need to put in my critical values. So negative one and positive one. Since I don't have endpoints, I'm gonna leave space on both sides. I know the derivative is zero for both of these. And now I'm gonna plug in a negative number, let's say like negative 10. My derivative would end up being positive. If I plug in zero, my derivative ends up being negative. If I plug in a big positive number, my derivative ends up being positive. So I go from positive to zero to negative to zero to positive. So I have a local max and I have a local min. Now I have to think about what the end behavior is like. So this end behavior, this plus, means that the slope is positive. So on this side of the graph, I would have an arrow pointing up. This plus means that coming from the left, I have positive slope. So coming from the left, I'd be coming up, which actually means there's an arrow going down here. So I would have an arrow going down. I'd go up until I flatten out, and then I start decreasing. And then I flatten out, and then I start increasing again. So this is what the graph would look like. I'd have a local max and a local min. I would not have an absolute max or min because those go forever. To figure out what the local max and the local min are, I would need to plug in positive and negative one. So I would figure out what f of one is and what f of negative one is. So if I plug in one, one minus three is negative two, plus four would be two. And then if I plug in negative one, negative one plus three is two, 2 plus 4 is 6. So my local max, and we just give the y value, would be 6. My local min, we just give the y value, and it's 2. Absolute max would be none, and then same for absolute min. You would also say none. So again, to find the extrema, you're looking at the first derivative. Find out where it's 0 or undefined. Um, the extremes will only ever happen at a critical point or at an endpoint. It doesn't have to be an extreme just because it's a critical point. So if you think about something like this, you have positive slope, zero slope, positive slope. So that's not a max or a min. You have to make sure that your slope either changes from positive to negative when you have a max or from negative to positive when you have a min. Positive slope to zero slope to positive slope is not a max or a min. And then just check the endpoints because that's where your absolute max or min could happen or they could happen at critical points. Um, if you have a closed continuous interval, you will have an absolute maximum and a minimum. So that was a quick theorem. We'll come back to it next semester. When we deal with concavity, we're looking at the second derivative, not the first derivative. Um, we would say it's concave up if the slope is increasing. So if the rate of change of the rate of change is positive, we'd say a function is concave down if the slope is decreasing, or if the rate of change of the rate of change is negative. So it's concave up if f double prime is positive, and it's concave down if f double prime is negative. Keep in mind that the original function is the one that's going to be concave up or concave down. Concave up looks like a cup, concave down looks like a furrow. So keep in mind that concave down can have positive slope or negative slope, but the whole time the slope is decreasing. So concave up looks like a cup, concave down looks like a frown. A point of inflection is similar to an extreme, but a point of inflection is dealing with the second derivative. 
So if we switch concavity, either from concave up to concave down, that's a point of inflection. And that would happen when the second derivative was zero or undefined, and you have a change in the sign. So F double prime either goes positive to negative or negative to positive. And where that arrow is, it would either be zero or undefined. Now, there's not two different names for a point of inflection depending on which way you go. So there's not a difference like there was for a max or a min. It's called a point of inflection either way. Now, for extremes, you give the y values, but for a point of inflection, you're going to give the x and the y value because it is a point. That's what the P in POI stands for. Again, the point of inflection is just where we switch concavity. So I had concave down and then I have concave up. So if I switch concavity, that's a POI. All right. So we want to create a combined table and use it to describe the motion of this particle. So we're going to find the first and second derivative, find out when they're equal to zero, and then set up our table. So we're assuming that this is a position graph. So if we take the derivative of position, we're going to get our velocity graph. And if we take the, sorry, the derivative of our velocity, we're going to get our acceleration. Now I need to figure out where each of them is equal to zero to find the critical values for this first function and then to find the potential POIs for the second one. So first derivative equals zero, 3t squared minus 18t equals zero, 3t times t minus 6 equals zero, so t equals zero or t equals 6. And then I'm also going to set the second derivative equal to zero, so 6t minus 18 equals zero, 6t equals 18, so t equals 3. So these are the values I need in my table along with the endpoints. So when I'm making my table, I would fill in the endpoints and I would fill in these values. Now, I'm not going to go through the time to actually fill out the table because this is the same one that we did in one of our videos. Um, you use the first derivative to fill out the S prime table. You use the second derivative to fill out the S double prime table. Um, so I've done all that for you guys here. So here's all your critical values. When your first derivative goes from positive to negative, you have a max. When your first derivative goes from negative to positive, you have a minimum. When your second derivative changes sign, you have a POI. And then you have to fill in the Y values so that you can see if your local max is your absolute max and you need to see if your local min is your absolute min. In this case, my absolute max was actually at an endpoint, and my absolute min was actually at an endpoint. So these were local or relative maxes and mins that we found on the inside. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if this is my velocity and this is my acceleration, is to look at when things are speeding up and slowing down, because that's a very common question on the AP exam. So right here, I see velocity and acceleration are different signs, so I would be slowing down. Same thing here. Over here, they're both negative, but I'm actually speeding up. I'm speeding up in the negative direction. So here I'm slowing down, and then here I'm speeding up again. Velocity tells you which direction you're moving. So I'm going to the right or up, and then I'm going to the left or back, and then I'm going to the right again. And then we've got our acceleration. First, I had negative acceleration, then I had positive acceleration. Negative acceleration means the velocity is decreasing. I might be slowing down or I might be speeding up, depending on whether the velocity is positive or negative. And then if the second derivative or if acceleration is positive, then I'm speeding up. Um, sorry, I might be speeding up, I might be slowing down, but my velocity is increasing. So if I already have a positive velocity, I'm speeding up. If I had a negative velocity, I would be slowing down. The last thing in this unit, um, I want to go over these summary tables. So the first derivative tells you the rate of change of f. Another name for rate of change is slope. The first derivative will tell you if f is increasing or decreasing. Um, and we're going to come back. I'm actually going to start at this slide again when I do the second half of the video because I'm about to run out of time. So that's it for part one. I'll do part two in a second here.